once again for listening or watching to another message from me, Pastor Alan Pillay from Living Well Online. I uh, uh, just want to thank you for uh, connecting with us. Thank you for feedback. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for subscribing to our channel. And I hope this message is a blessing and encourages you. I want to uh, title the message, Make Your Life Count. Make Your Life Count. Count. I'm not talking about um, counting sheep uh, so that you can fall off to sleep, but I'm talking about leaving a legacy, an indelible mark on earth now and even when you are gone. I just want to read you a story that will sum up my whole message. The story is of a pencil. I'm going to read it so you get the full impact of it. A pencil maker took a pencil aside just before putting him into the box. There are five things you need to know, he told the pencil, before I send you out into the world. Always remember these principles and never forget, and you will become the best pencil you can be. And these are the principles. Number one, you will be able to do many great things, but only if you allow yourself to be held in someone's hand. Number two, you will experience a painful sharpening from time to time, but you will need it to become a better pencil. Number three, you will be able to correct any mistakes you might make. Number four, the most important part of you will always be what's inside. And five, on every surface you are used on, you must leave your mark, no matter what the condition you must continue to write. The pencil, of course, understood and promised to remember that and went into the box with purpose in his heart. What a wonderful story. What a wonderful meaning. And I will sum it up at the end of the message as well. You know, friend, I believe every life has a plan. It has a purpose and it has a priority. I want to make my life count. I didn't realize it when I was a young kid uh, as much as I understand it now. But when I did recall that my life had a plan and a purpose and a priority, I started to find a quality of life that came with that understanding. I believe my life has a plan. I believe my life has a purpose. I believe my life has a priority. And I'll do everything in my power to follow that understanding. Uh, you know, I could choose uh, my way or mess up or can fo follow God's way and always expect the best. So let's look how you can make your life count. I put it plainly in three P's. You probably heard the words before. Plan, purpose and priority. And I'll give it to you in three points and a few quotes at the end and we'll wind it down. I want to say to you, point number one, your creator has a plan for you. Just like that pencil maker has he made that pencil, giving it its instructions? Your creator has a plan for you. And we'll look at the story of Jeremiah, a prophet in the Old Testament, one of the greatest prophets who lived. I'll read from Jeremiah 1, uh, 4 to 9. The Lord gave me this message, that is Jeremiah. I knew you before I formed you in my mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you as my prophet to the nations. Oh, sovereign Lord, I said, I can't speak for you. I'm too young. The Lord replied, don't say I'm too young, for you must go wherever I send you and say whatever I tell you. And don't be afraid of the people, for I will be there with you and will protect you. I, the Lord, have spoken. Then the Lord reached out and touched my mouth and said, look, I have put my words in your mouth. The story there was simple. God called Jeremiah, told him that he was uh, in God's plan, even before he was born, right there in his mother's womb. And friend, that's where God has a plan for you all the time. Before you were born, I want those new parents to start thinking about their children's future. That God has a plan for your kid, uh, even before they were born, even before they were conceived. God knows them. As Psalms 139 said, you knew me even when before I was formed in my mother's womb. And I want to encourage you parents today, as you uh, uh, ponder the, the, the growth and maturity of your kids, 
believe that God has a plan, just as he had a plan for Jeremiah, telling him, before I formed you, I wanted to use you. And Jeremiah came up with that excuse. No, I can't talk for you. I'm too uh, young. I'm afraid to speak. And the Lord said, don't worry about that. I will help you. I will protect you. And, I, and he touched his mouth and he was able to be uh, uh, to speak for God in the future. And Jeremiah became one of the greatest prophets, friend. His life counted. Uh, he went to be used mightily by God, as I said. Although he suffered many times, and although uh, he was known as the weeping prophet, but I'm glad he didn't allow his personal ex excuses or his personal pain to distract him from God's plan for his life. He made his uh, life count, and today he's remembered all over the world through his book, Jeremiah. Point number two, your life has a purpose. And who better uh, to use as an example than Jesus? Jesus had a purpose. As we read in John 18.37 in the NIV, he says, You are a king then, Pilate said. Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. In fact, the reason I was born and came into the world is to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of the truth listens to me. You know, Jesus said, this is the reason I was born. I have a purpose. I'm glad Jesus, uh, our pace setter, he understood purpose. He understood his mission. He understood for what he was born. And friend, he said to Pilate, as Pilate said, you are a king. Jesus uh, knew that he was a king, but he wasn't going to let that distract him from the bigger purpose of his life, that he would come and declare the truth of God's word, the love and God's relationship to us as humankind. He came to reveal God in the purpose. And that was the truth. In fact, so much so that Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. You know, when Jesus was on earth, he was always in demand. Everybody wanted a piece of his body, both literally and uh, symbolically. And ironically, we got it through the cross that Jesus's body was broken and, and, and given to all of us as participants of the Holy Communion. But, you know, amidst the preaching, amidst the healing, amidst the building of a team, Jesus um, understood that his main objective was to come declare the truth of God's love and God's care for humans. For the Bible says Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. Jesus understood his purpose, friend. And I want to tell you that uh, as we uh, follow in his footsteps, that we too might uh, understand his purpose, our purpose. And let's say he understood his purpose with a simple uh, statement. The main thing is to keep the main thing, the main thing. I love that. The main thing is to keep the main thing, the main thing. Um, we know that Jesus's life has counted and it continues to count for millions. In fact, probably two and a half to three billion people worldwide. Jesus's life counts today, friend, because he understood purpose. And number three, your life as a priority. Someone once said, all things in life are important, but certain things are a priority. Let me tell you a story of Esther. She was a young Jewish girl in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a foreign empire. She was uh, chosen to be one of the uh, king's brides and she was beautiful and uh, when she got there it wasn't a straight protocol that you could have interaction with a king all the time you only could go when you had a, a king summon you to come uh, and be before him but uh, during the time of her waiting uh, one of the king's officials he hated uh, Esther's people group the Jews he didn't want them to be prominent in that land and he seized an opportunity to destroy not just one or two but all of them and he caused a uh, payment to be made to the king to say uh, can you uh, uh, um, exterminate the Jewish nation and uh, um, Esther's uncle Mordecai who brought her and raised her up to the position she was now in and uh, said to Esther do you know as the word of the Lord uh, says if you remain silent at this time relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place but you and your father's family will perish and who knows that but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this he said to Esther in simple terms Esther this is your priority 
You have to use your influence to save the Jewish people. And you know, sometimes that God has created you for a priority as as the scripture says, for such a time as this, you have a plan, you have a purpose, and you have a priority, friend. Sometimes we could let comfort, sometimes we could get, let complacency or maybe procrastination to rob us from following our priority. But uh, Mordecai has said to uh, Esther, this is the time God has brought you into the throne to establish the priority of saving the Jews from extermination. And as you know the story, um, uh, the Jews were spared because of uh, Mordecai's a, a, a intervention in pl uh, planning uh, or preventing a plotting of the king's overthrow. And the Jewish nation was saved at that stage. Hester's life counted, friend. It counted so much. And I believe that she pleaded for people's life. They were spared. And her life counted for herself and for the thousands of her people. You know, friend, when you realize the priority of your calling, the less important things will fall into its place. If you are a younger person listening to me, I hope that you believe that your life has a plan, your life has a purpose, your life has a priority. Let me say as a older person that when you understand this from a young age, you will be spared a lot of pain. You will be spared a lot of regret if you follow your plan that God has for you. Follow your purpose that He has called you to and establish the priority of your life. You will enjoy life and you will have a life that is uh, filled with abund abundance and bounty and certainty. Most of you that listen to me have lived more of your life than what you've got to live. Some of you understand your plan. Some of you understand your purposes and your priority and you're as happy as Larry. But there are many of you that might be wondering, what is my plan? What is my real purpose? Or what is my priority? Even at this mature age, to you I want to say, don't be discouraged. You know, perhaps God has used you uh, recently or in the past, but you didn't recognize it as you should. And uh, let me say to you, He can continue to use you wonderfully if you allow Him to. But someone once said, you are never too old to set another goal or to dream a new dream. Friend, you are never too old. As I always quip, I might be whole, but I am not cold. I might be over the hill, but I'm not past my peak. I might, be, I might be losing my sight, but I'm not losing my vision. I might be coming close to the finish line, but I am not yet finished. Let me encourage you, all of you that are listening to me. God has a plan for you. God has a purpose for you. God has a priority for you. He knows what's best for you. Are you going to work with Him or are you going to work against Him? Don't be surprised when God surprises you. Moses was 80 years old when God used him to lead almost 200 people, uh, 2 million people, sorry, from the wilderness into freedom. Caleb was 85 years old when he said to God, I am still ready for adventure. Why? Because these men knew God had a plan, a purpose, and a priority for their life. God is always on time, my friend. He's never too early nor too late. As I conclude, let's go back to the story of the pencil. Imagine the pencil was you. Always remember these principles and never forget that you will become the best person you can be. Uh, one, you will be able to do many great things only if you allow yourself to be held in God's hand and allow other human beings to access you for the many gifts you possess. Two, you will experience a painful sharpening from time to time by going through various problems in life, but you will need it to become a stronger person. Three, you will be able to correct any mistakes you might make. Four, your most important part of your life will always be what's on the inside. And five, on every surface you walk through, you must leave your mark. No matter what the situation, you must continue to do your duties. Let the story of the pencil encourage you, my friend, that you are a special person, that your life was uh, meant for purpose, was meant for uh, priority, has a plan. And may you be able to fulfill the purpose for which you are born into. Never allow yourself to get discouraged and think that your life is insignificant and, and cannot make a difference or a change. Friend, you were born with a plan. You were born for a purpose and you were born with a priority of... Let me give you a few quotes. Um, oh, the worst of all tragedies is not go to die young, but to live until I'm 75 
and yet not ever truly to have lived. Martin Luther King. Our lives matter, no matter what people tell you otherwise. God created everything for a purpose. It's not enough to have lived. We should be determined to live for something. Winston Churchill. The, the soul which has no fixed purpose in life is lost. To be everywhere is to be nowhere. Michael D. Montaigne. Your life counts, my friend. But you've got to believe that. And only you can, in partnership with the Creator, make that happen. I hope this morning you think about these words and become someone who starts making their life count. I do believe your life is counting. I don't want to say that your life is in vain. I believe many of you, your life is counting. But only thing, you don't recognize it. Friend, God made you so that your life could come. Be encouraged by the word today and may the Lord richly bless you. And I want to just encourage you, if you don't know Jesus as a Savior, why don't you just ask him to come and live in your life by his spirit so that he can make you uh, a person that has a plan, a purpose and a priority in Jesus' name. Would you pray with me? Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you that you make all our lives count. And I thank you that I, you make my life count. And Father, I pray I would continue to live according to your plan, according to your purpose, and, and Lord, according to your priority for my life. I pray for if anybody has asked that they would receive you, would just come into their life and live in their hearts by your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. And I'm going to pray for the sick if you are unwell. Father, we pray for those that are unwell. Just heal them, strengthen them, especially with those that are still struggling from the after effects of COVID or current effects of COVID. Just heal and strengthen them. Thank you, Lord, that you are able to heal the sick from all disease in Jesus' name. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord smile upon you and give you peace. God bless you. Thank you for listening in and we'll catch up next time.